If you tried to pitch this show right now, uh, you would not even make it past the first producer meeting. In the fall of 2001, ABC's Monday Night Football was still a very big deal. And ahead of the season, the Colts presented WRTV with a unique idea. Hey, we want to do something called Colts Monday Night with Jim Irsay, and we want Dave to host it. It wasn't really a football show, was it? Good evening once again. Welcome to Galleons up in Castleton Square. A live audience at the old Galleon Sporting Goods store in Castleton Square. Former WRTV sports director Dave First at the helm, and at the center of it all was Colts owner Jim Ursay. Long before his days as a Twitter star and a rock star, Mr. Ursay was ready for prime time. Colts fans, hear from the man in charge. It's Colts Monday night with Jim Ursay, live from Galleons, tonight at 7.30 on RTV6. Come on, join us. As a host, you, know, you feel like you got to you got to bring some excitement. You got to you got to introduce everybody. You got to do this, and here comes Jim Irsay, being Jim, and he's handed out hundred dollar bills. I mean, here I'm thinking, okay, I, you know, I'm the host of the show, ladies and gentlemen, Jim Irsay, and he comes out. Hey, everybody, we're handing out hundred dollar bills. I'm like, what what are we doing here? The show featured a weekly chat session with Colts players and staff from that 2001 season. He'd done that one time before, so I was like, okay, he must have a trick up his sleeve because, you know, Peyton's a great improviser. Certainly an honor to be mentioned uh, in any sort of record book or coach records or whatever with one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, Johnny Unitas. But also an eclectic collection of guests from the Colts owner's circle of friends. We're going to do your next game. We do you next against Kansas, Kansas City uh, about 10 days. Yeah. Every week you came in thinking that you were going to get show X and by the time it was eight o'clock, nine o'clock, whatever you know, by the time the show was over with, you didn't get that show. Who you're talking to concentration slip away don't you sweet baby so far away. I did everything I could prepare for to do and think we were and then once Jim shows up it's oh we're we're on a roller coaster. Let's just go. Let's just hop on the horse and ride it. John Mellencamp, everybody. John Mellencamp. Hey, John. <laughs> Come on, right here. Right over here. You're in the big chair. Right, John, you know, buddy. I was a huge Mellencamp guy growing up. And so a little starstruck when he shows up. Uh, people are asking to play Jack and Diane on their on their guitars, and he's, he, you could tell he wanted no part of it. He was just there for the you know the show and Jim's okay. For some reason, you know, you walked in and you seemed real tall to me at the time. You know? <laughs> he was this great big kid, you know. You know, you shrink with age, I think. Uh, I did. <laughs> and how about the looks? Twenty plus years later, it's a time capsule of early two thousands fashion. We all had the Pat Riley look, right? Slick back hair. Uh, I took Jimmy's cue on that. Okay, I'll, I'll go with the slick back hair. Uh, and so big suits. Uh, a, a lot of cloth involved, right? But for that incredible fall, it was TV gold, capturing a Colts franchise that was on its way to the top of the NFL mountain. I think even then, the Colts as an organization, and, and certainly me or whoever was covering the team at the time, knew something special was happening. We didn't know where this was going to go, though. 